Oh no. Darth Vader's back. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome back to Azar with Nick and John. So, Star Wars in the masses these days. Yes. New shows all the time, but kind of a more unique thing with this Obi-Wan series where we're getting Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen coming back, which is kind of a different spin on what we've been getting. A but really how different is it spin, and how like not it? even... Yeah. <laughs> Like, shouldn't it be happening, Spin? But anyways, we're going yes. to... And there we go. Yeah. We're going to be talking about the VFX mostly and the visuals and style choices. We're not going to get into the whole timeline and stuff like that. We're looking at it from a visual perspective. And first thing I got to mention, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, we do great reviews. And also, we cover fun shows from Westworld to His Dark Materials to The Boys you name it, we're trying to cover it. So subscribe to stay updated to all, all of our awesome content. And also, spoilers up ahead. I don't know if you even watch the show, but just in case, the spoiler force is out there. Okay, yes. so now let's jump into it. Darth Vader is dragging people on the street. This is a mean, lean Darth Vader fighting machine. <laughs> get it? Because he's like all machine, basically. Oh, gosh. It's, I didn't get it, and I wish I still hadn't been told about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? So Nick kind of pointed out some spots for me to kind of watch. I think you guys know in some of the conversations, I'm kind of burnt out on Star Wars. Yeah. It's not to say it's not good and that I'm not glad it's out there for people who want to watch it, but I'm kind of a little bit Star Wars out, I mm -hmm. guess. That's not a proper sentence and wording, but <laughs> there's there's certainly some things that I do appreciate they're doing visually here. Um, but before I go off on my little tangent, like Nick, what do you think about Darth Vader being back and do oh, you think it's like a fun mm. thing and then just visual visually like how do you like that and did the visuals work with what he was doing dragging people on the ground and all that so yeah so Darth Vader being back you know I'm always down to see Darth Vader like if it's a you know a side story or like a, a fan-made film I'm curious how they're gonna you know how Darth Vader really was because when we saw Darth Vader he mostly just did talking in the Star Wars movies and yeah he also just like barely move the lightsaber i feel like you know what I mean? especially in like a new hope like but you yeah. know he's supposed to be the bad bad the worst like jedi not the worst but like the strongest evil villain like out there kind of thing right so like rogue one for example disney made that movie right and they did probably the best part in the whole movie was darth vader I don't think so. I don't like think action was, wise. No, you didn't think that was cool for Darth Vader? That was added at the very end by a different director than actually directed the oh, movie. They okay. weren't confident it was going to do well. And they said, you know what? We need some strong member berries to get people to really <laughs> like this. So send them off while I'm like, F you guys. But a lot of people loved it. So whatever. It worked out fine. But, um, but you know, that scene, a lot of people liked. And it would make sense that, hey, we're doing an Obi-Wan. Yeah. I'm assuming... You know, Ewan McGregor's still a top name, you know, in Hollywood. He's not doing quite as much memorable that I think he did back in the day, but he's a big name actor. Yeah. They're probably paying a lot of money to get him, Hayden Christensen. I saw some other stuff he was in after Star Wars. He's a pretty good actor. I didn't think he was great in Star Wars, but he's a good actor. And I'm assuming yeah. to get both of them back is pretty expensive. And so it's like, all right, we need to do some cool stuff and, you know, drop some stuff that people are going to want to yeah, see. They need some fire, um, like literal yeah. fire. <laughs> you know, so I... Did they bring back James Earl Jones to do the to do the Darth Vader dialogue, or did they just get a sound alike to do that? Because it sounded a lot Ooh, I don't like know. Yeah, Darth the, Vader. Yeah, yeah. The, the sound was good. The sound yeah. and I like I I think I don't know if I clipped this in your in there for you, but it's so cool when Darth Vader walks up. It's just like you see feet and you hear breathing, and that's it. It's a cool, yeah. like, you know, but it goes to show how well they did it the first time, like in the original trilogy. And, they, and that's a long, um, what they did in, was it the Mandalorian when mm -hmm. you thought Boba Fett was back, you just heard the ching, ching, yeah. and you just, and sometimes the sound is all you need. And I do appreciate things like that. And that's obviously not an effect, but that's effective storytelling. So it's something that yeah. Nick and I still like to talk effective about Effective storytelling by the original though. The reason why those sounds are so mm. iconic is because the originals held, like if you never yeah. knew Darth Vader, it would be like, okay, this is, there's an asthmatic <laughs> coming here. Like, you know, <laughs> you know, what's going on here, you know, but, um, Okay, so he drags, so he's like evil. Like, I mean, like we know he killed younglings and, you know, Return of the, of the Sith or whatever. But like, we never get to see it. The door's shut. 
So it's like, ooh, he did some bad stuff, but you can't watch kind of thing. But now we're seeing him, like, kill people in the streets, like, crack their neck, drag people along, and just, like, he is definitely acting like a bad guy. What Did you did you <laughs> like that, though? I mean, or... or uh, You know, the section with, with Ewan McGregor, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and he's like, all right, I'm going to do the same thing that you did to me. I kind of... Oh, I didn't the like the dialogue. Scene, yeah. I didn't like the dialogue that he had, mm-hmm. but I kind of like the idea. I mean, again, I guess that's a member berry in its own regard, yeah. but it's like, hey, you know what? You caused me the most pain in one of the biggest downfalls in my life. I'm going to Oh, you mother effer. I'm going to do the exact same thing to you. Yeah. (laughs) So it's like, I kind of like that because, you know, that's poetic, right? It's kind of poetic. Yeah. It's kind of one of the things that put him over the edge into, you know, completely going full crazy, you know? And so it it was kind of a, did we need him back? No, but was it a a decent moment? It's like, okay, that makes sense. He'd want to do the same thing back. It's like, all right, an eye for an eye. Let's get a fire for a fire or something. You know, it's like, it was for an arm. Yeah. (laughs) And you know, and, and visually it was depicted, you know, pretty cool. Like some of the, some of the shots and cinematography, I wasn't completely crazy about in, Mm -hmm. in, in the sections that I saw, but overall, I mean, those sections like, like, Oh, that looks, that fire doesn't look friendly, you know, like the way it's depicted. Yeah. 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 And I also like how menacing of a character Darth Vader is where he's like a Frankenstein or like a monster that doesn't need to run after you. You know, like he's so intimidating. He's like, I'll just walk and take my time. Like I'm going to come. You know what I mean? Like he's like, like uh, um, Jason, I think Jason, right. The guy with the the hockey mask, whatever. He would always walk. He would never really run after his victims. Like, you know, it's just that kind of like horror kind of movies. You know, like it's like, hey, no matter how much you run and hide, I'm just going to walk and find you kind of thing. So. Now, granted, I thought it was kind of silly, but at the same time, it, it does go along with those whole monster things. I mean, I remember being in theaters when, uh, Revenge of the Sith came out and people literally laughed, you know, when he busted out his Frankenstein thing. And clearly that's what they were trying to depict, <laughs> but it just, it, it, it came off as cheesy and him yeah. just walking after Obi-Wan, like the person that he wants to get back so badly yeah. just kind of seemed weird to me. And this is not, yes. we're getting off into this story. Is very territory, story. But and obviously like just to briefly touch on story, I wasn't a fan that like, Obi-Wan kind of forgot his powers. Like if you're tasked with, you know, your job is to make sure Luke is safe on this planet. Why would you give up the force anyways? Don't need to go there. (laughs) It's a waste of time. But, but anyways, you would, you would think it would be a stronger battle, but I'm guessing they're trying to have a bigger buildup for the finale. Like, Obi-Wan got his strength back, but we know they both survived. So like, what's the point? <laughs> right, no, the point no. is people want to see it. So okay. they just put it in there. Yeah. Were you a fan of the, the glowing at night mm-hmm. off of the, off the, the lightsaber? Yeah. So Nick and I were talking briefly. He's like, so what do you think? And I just rolled my eyes and he started laughing, but I said, I had some things that I did like, and that's something that I very much appreciate and like in this the newer movies, mm-hmm. I remember in was either Attack of the Clones or Avenger of the Sith. There was a few shots where they had some interactive light. Like you could tell mm-hmm. they had real light off screen and just kind of flashing it, you know, when they're supposed to be waving around their lights. It looked kind of, che- it looked cool, but it looked kind of cheesy because we weren't seeing in those shots what they were actually doing. As the movies have progressed, you're getting a little bit more of that. But they had a lot of interactive light in this one, and I did like that because it it was weird that in the the other movies, you know, you do something called rotoscoping to make the lightsabers, and you can make it look like something's glowing, but it's obviously not cast in real light. Whereas here, we're getting really cool localized light to where you know, like you have to you either go gonna be doing a full 3D model so the model can can catch the the light and cast the shadows, or you're figuring out a way on set that you can actually have that light interact with the yeah. characters. And I thought that was cool. So clearly you, you kind of had some thoughts on that too, I guess. Well, yeah, I just, I like the idea of using it at night too. The idea mm-hmm. of storytelling, like the only source of light is the lightsaber mm-hmm. and he's just, and it's so bright. He can't see anything else around him. It's like rely yeah. on the force. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> but overall yeah, i thought it was so funny he was having to get, say stoke so close to that crack on the window it's like you have the force dude you don't have to push it close just you know back up a little bit i, I don't know anyway story-wise i'm not saying anything else because you know yeah we try and stay positive on this channel but... okay revenge of no i'm just kidding oh gosh hold on. give me a second i'm gathering myself but yes they they there were some beautiful visuals in it and um yes. <clears throat> it's the same crew I'm guessing that also did the Mandalorian stuff so it's like yes there are talented VFX artists 
working on these shows, which is awesome. And, I, and I, yeah, it, sure. it must be great for any visual effects artist to be able to work on something iconic like this, too. Like I was even thinking back to like if you're a Lord of the Rings person, even though you may not like The Hobbit, but like if The Hobbit and you got offered to work on The Hobbit, and yeah. you're a VFX person, you'd be like, oh, my gosh, yeah, because it's a product you love. And if you're working on this, you probably love Star Wars and the ships and oh my gosh did i, did I put the, the the scene in the the clip where the the ship stops the hot uh with ship? the b-wing yeah, yeah B-wing, oh my yeah. gosh okay we gotta or talk about B-wing. that really quick a, okay there was one other, thing, <laughs> one other thing that really bothered me it just bothered me because i don't know if physics work like this in the star wars world um so that those those ships were used to tie up the the adats, right? Yeah. Okay. Adats, yeah. And snow speeders, I think. Yeah. No, uh, yeah. Anyway. But basically, they don't hover. Anyway. They don't hover like that. They cannot stop at like full speed and hover <laughs> and shoot. And I, when I saw that, I'm like, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> <laughs> and it made the effects look so stupid. I don't know. Because because it felt so weightless the way it stopped too and everything. I was just like, really? And then like, throw the bomb. <laughs> Okay, that's enough. <laughs> okay, but anyways, did did that throw you off at all with the ship? I didn't think about it at the time. Okay. Um, part of me was just thinking this is so painful. I needed to end pretty quick. Okay. But uh, right. yeah, you could, we could just add that <laughs> but, in there as well. And then I like how the shots not even pulled back that far, and the ship, and she's right there like fighting it. I'm like this is not happening. <laughs> okay. Now, clearly they're not spending as much money on this as they were oh. the mainline movies back of course, then. So yeah. we have to keep that in it's mind. A show. You know, that's a big thing. It's like, it looks cool and they're putting a lot of effort into mm-hmm. it, but it also probably doesn't have the hundreds of millions of dollars or no, whatever that were spent on yeah. the, you know, the, <clears throat> so we're, we're poking fun here, but it's still amazing work. They did. work. And probably for the time and the budget they had, they, they did great stuff. But I mean, you know, when you're just standing there on a green screen or blue screen, even if they had the virtual production, you're yeah. just kind of lo- 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 <laughs> and they're trying to make the, you know, the, the, shot the, the, yeah. the, the shots line up later. It's like, you know, it's, it's hard to make that oh, look totally real. Is. And there's, there's a lot of Star Wars that relies on that. Like, lo- 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 lo, you know, it's like when, <laughs> oh my gosh, you know, so yeah, a lot of things bothered me, but the, uh, yeah. the effects work is done well. Oh, it's beautiful. Just, it looks when beautiful. you're on set capturing it. Like you're that was a story screen. beat more like it though. Like having the, the speeder stop that close, yeah, like and yeah, shoot yeah. rapid fire. That's a story thing. And the visual effects artists are like, Hey, all right, you want <laughs> this done? You're going to get it done. Well, when you're on a green screen or blue screen and you're having someone act, sometimes mm. you can tell them like, Hey, you know, act a little bit more exaggerated or to- pull it back a little bit. But mm. overall, the actor has a hard time knowing yeah. and everybody on the set has a hard time knowing too, unless you have some previs where you can do a quick, you know, slap mm-hmm. composite where you can take them off the green screen or crude matter and see manner and see what they look like in that scene. You're like, all right, we just got to trust this. This is going to look cool when they do their thing. But yeah. you know, if you're like back in the old days of, you know, Forrest Gump and, and, you know, Jurassic <laughs> Park, they're like little ping pong balls. There is the T-Rex. And you're like, Oh, Oh, it, it's, yeah. it's really hard to know for anybody, the actors uh-huh. or the people on set, like technically is the green screen extraction going to work? Okay. Yes. We, we, we can look at that and know if that's going to work. Is it going to work in the context of the shot? Well, we're going to have to do yeah. some fakery and trickery to try and make it work, you know, based on their acting and that that can be hard. And I think part of that is just some of those things that we're seeing. So the effects work was done wonderfully. Beautiful. It's just, yeah. yeah Story yeah, and everything flaws. else. And what's cool is like you mentioned, like now with the virtual production, you remember like the whole behind the scenes making up actors really enjoy being on set now because it makes it even more, <clears throat> I guess, makes it easier to interact with your environment more. But, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, and I think one of the funny things before Gina Carano kind of got uh, dismissed the from the, <laughs> the yeah from the from the Star Wars universe, um, she was talking about you know she's a she's a tough woman. You know, used to be a hardcore MMA fighter, and yeah. you know has had a pretty good uh, you know acting career as well. I, mean, I would say very successful. Probably one of the most like when I think of athletes that go into acting, there's not many that make that transition very well. But she was saying that like yeah, you know when you have a when the shot in the show has a physically moving camera and you're standing still, you kind of get this vertigo feeling kind of like um, mm. in the early VR days when you put on VR goggles, people didn't know what was going to make people feel nausea and oh. sick or not. And one thing that would make people really feel sick is the camera's moving and you're not, you're like, <laughs> and so it's kind of this, it's kind of the same thing on that, uh, you know, that, that virtual production set. It's like, okay, my visual senses are telling me that I'm moving, but, I'm not like, that's, that's really weird. And so 
for the most part, I think people really like virtual production, but it sounds like there's still some funk, you know, that there's some trickery going on, obviously. So, yeah. Well, let us know down in the comments below if you enjoy, you know, go for it. Have fun with it with the comments. Say whatever you want about Star Wars and fun stuff like that. We're not going to stop you. But visually, did you enjoy it visually? Did you enjoy yeah. where they took Darth Vader to as a character? Were there some story beats, even though the story may seem whatever to you, good or bad or whatever? Were there certain story beats that were still pretty strong that can translate even though it doesn't make sense for the timeline but anyways john you want to give us a warm close down <laughs> yeah you guys so like nick was saying having the conversation down below is part of the fun and it could be story based it could be visual effects based you know let us know what we're thinking like darth vader now is just a bad guy for the sake of being bad even in the, the first movies we had hints of his background and like he's mm. not just bad bad so we're curious to hear what you guys think about it from a story standpoint, visual effects standpoint. Was there other shots that you really enjoyed that we didn't talk about? We obviously only talked about a few different sections. If there's stuff that you thought really, you know, hit the mark as far as effects, we'd love to hear you talk about it as well. So thank you guys for joining us. Check out azart.space for all the audio and video links, and we'll see you on the next Azart. Take out Darth. I have the high ground. <laughs> <laughs> Should have an episode where like you know, he's dragging him on the ground. Do you do have the high ground? You know, just completely mocking him all these years later. Yeah, just